In this video, we're gonna take a look at icons, how they can really improve your website, make everything look amazing, impress your visitors, make it easy to understand, and how easy it can be to create them using Thrive Architect. Let's dive right in. In this video, we're gonna look at icons. Adding icons to your website makes it look more punchy, more stylish, helps your visitors get where they're going faster, find the information they're looking for, and it just looks great. Here's three examples on the screen of what we're gonna to create today to show you how you can add icons to text, headings above text, buttons, and also content boxes to make things look really cool. So let's go in and have a look how I did this. So let's get right into it. In the Thrive Architect Builder on the left hand side are the elements and you can look for the icon element. Often I can't find it so I just actually search in the top box here and type in icon. Now you can either click on the element to add it to the bottom of the page or you can drag and drop it. So let's just click it because we have no other content on the page and it automatically pops up a really cool box where you can choose from the built-in library of icons. Now, if you've used the previous version of the tool from the Thrive Guys, it was a little bit annoying in the past because you had to search and scroll and try and find your icons. You had to import libraries of icons. It was a bit of a pain, actually. I really, really annoyed the hell out of me. So in this version, it's really cool. All the icons are already in there. Of course, you can't add to these. Maybe that's something that I'll do in a future version, but the library they have is really, really extensive. If I scroll through here, you can see there's probably a hundred or more icons. So you usually can find something that you're looking for, but instead of scrolling through them and looking for something which you know is there, but you just can't find it because that happens to me all the time, let's just type in Twitter, for example. And as you start typing, it already starts to find the icons that we're looking for. So let's take the standard Twitter icon and add that to our page. And as you can see at the top here, we now have a very small standard size 60 pixel icon in black. Of course, that's probably not what you're after. So let's have a look at the options on the left hand side and see what else we can change. If you pick the wrong, wrong icon or you wanna change the icon, you can click this choose icon button and it tells us in text here on the left what the icon is, but you can't edit, edit that, you have to click the button. If you wanna make the icon bigger, you grab the slider and you slide it across, or if you know exactly what size you want, you can type it in here, or you can use these little arrows, which I find a bit fiddly, so I usually just grab the slider and make it as big as I want it to be. And if it changes later on, you're not happy with the size, you can just come back and edit that. The next most important thing is the color, and we are gonna use some predefined colors from some other stuff I've built in Thrive before. I'm gonna choose the kind of burgundy purple color here. So that's cool. So if I click away from the box now, you can see the icon in all its glory. It's pretty simple, pretty basic, nothing too stunning. But where it gets interesting is you can add this icon to other content to make it really cool. So how do we do that? Well, let's take a look at a first way I would do that. I would add icons to supplement headings, to kind of give headings extra meaning or buttons extra meaning. So you can add an icon to help people know visually what it is the content that they're looking at. So let's take a heading where we're talking about Twitter, for example. So let's put in here Twitter and let's center that to put it under the icon and make it bold and change the color to the same color as the icon. So it's actually very similar. And what I also wanna do is make it all uppercase, which you can do in the text transformation here. So we have uppercase and maybe I'll make that font a little bit bigger and do some letter spacing like that. So that's pretty cool. We're talking about Twitter. We've got a box about Twitter but it's all kind of the same color. So what we can also do, you can also repeat this through your content so you'll always have a related icon to your content. It adds a bit of visual punch to things you're doing. But it makes it a bit more interesting if you put a background color on here. So what I'm gonna do is go down to background style and I'm going to add in a colored layer here and I'm gonna add in light green color, it's a little bit dark. 
So let's make it a bit lighter. We just want a subtle background color here and we apply that and I'll click away so you can see it. So now we have a background color to our icon, which is quite nice, but square is a little bit boring. It's more typical to have a round one, round icons, boxes, sort of round icon sort of containers are really, really popular in web design and really, really cool. So let's click back on the icon and let's increase the size of this background a little bit more by putting some padding into it. So what we want to do is we want to go up to the padding element, click on the lock in the middle to make sure we're doing all padding at the same time. And then we put our icon on the padding, which is the inside of the box. And then we start increasing the padding by dragging our mouse. So let's make it a bit bigger. So generally in the Thrive Content Builder or the Thrive Architect now, you can change the padding one by one with your mouse by clicking, by dragging, by pressing the arrows, by typing them in. There's a bunch of ways you can do that. And the lock enables you to do them all at the same time. So you get equal sizing, which is what we want. We want equal size boxes on all sides of the icon. So it's an equal distance from the edges of the icon. So that's more or less what I want now. So we've done that by adding padding. We've added a background layer. And then what we do is we scroll down to the rounded corner section here, and we now need to increase this until, now watch the icon, you'll see as I increase the rounded borders, it starts to become round. And once you hit a certain size, which is pretty much half the width of the box, the rounding then becomes a circle. You can choose just to round the corners if you want, like that, or you can bring it all the way up to about 60 or so it seems to be, 75. And if you look now, we've got a rounded icon with the Twitter text. So that looks really cool. You can add some further finesse there by putting a shadow on the bottom there. Uh, let's have a look at adding a shadow and see. We can add a shadow on the left or we can add it further out on the other side and put it in the middle. We can put a bit more blur on it and some spread and it's telling me to save. Sorry about that. So you can add a bit of shadow. So play around with these blurs, distances and angles. The angle is when you have a distance. If you don't have a distance, it'll sit in the center of the icon and spread outwards. If you want it on the left, right, top or bottom, you can change this little angle here. You can also change the color of the shadow. I suggest you don't really do that. If it's white, Background, you want a dark shadow. If it's a dark background, you want a white sort of shadow or a light gray shadow. So now if I click off, you can see here that I have a nice 3D looking icon. That's pretty cool. Might suit you, might not suit you. You can get rid of that, of course. So there we have an icon with a heading and we can reuse that throughout our content or on the header of every page that we're developing or put a background on it and make it stand out. So that's pretty cool, right? What you could also do, and what I sometimes do for clients, is I create column layouts. And usually I have to code this by hand, which is where this is really cool. If we add some columns, and let's add a one-third, two-third column. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the icon into the left, and I'm going to drag the text into the right. So I'm going to kind of create an icon next to the heading instead of above the heading. Now it's not going to be ideal, it's not going to work in every situation, but what I want to do is move the text to the left and I want to move the icon to the right. Let's see how I can do that. I need some kind of alignment here and I'm not actually seeing it. I'm not sure if that's possible. Let's click on the icon and do right align. There we go. You use the alignment on the icon. So we left align the text, we right align the icon, and we need to now center the text by adding some either some padding or margin on the top here. And I've got the lock still locked, so I need to turn that off. Otherwise, it's adding it to everywhere. So you want to center the text here. And let's also take the shadow off the icon. I don't actually like that on here, so we can just delete that. So now we have an icon that is next to the heading, and you could also reduce the size of the icon and actually make it a bit smaller, and then 
realign the text again uh, down a little bit and put it next to it. So that looks a little bit more consistent. So now we have icons next to headings. So you can have icons above headings, icons next to headings. Another really cool thing you can do is put icons into buttons. So if you have a standard button, so as you can see with buttons, you have a very special option here. This is built in to the Thrive Architect plugin. You can actually add icons directly in the button. So that can also help give a visual aid to what it is that a button is all about. So we click here on the icon again, and then we can go and choose the icon and type in Twitter and put the one that we're interested in and drop that in. So now we have a really cool little icon next to the Twitter icon. And it's taken the default color from the text, so it works. You can change the background button and the link and everything about this particular button, just like you normally would. You can change the style of the button. You can change it to a ghost button, which is a clear background. You can have 3D buttons. It's a really cool number of different buttons available in Thrive Architect. The last option I want to have a look at with you guys is adding icons to boxes because that can be a really, really cool way of adding informational boxes and areas in your website, such as your services section on your homepage. So what we're going to do is make a content box and then we are going to add an icon to the top of it. So let's put a background on our box. Let's make it my crazy green color again. And then what you want to do is put some text into there. So let's just type in this is my insane box for Thrive. And then we can do everything we can normally do. We can turn that into a heading, which is green in this case, which is not very good. I want a black heading. I want that centered. I want to put some margin above that because I want it vertically centered. So let's vertically center it and make it bold. And I also would like to change the font color to my standard purple color. So there we go, we have centered text in a box and I'm actually going to move that box down a little bit using the margin which is something you need to learn. Margin and padding is your best friend so learn how to use that stuff. You need padding inside and margin outside. Boxes, buttons, text, whatever. So now we want to add an icon to this particular box. We want to put it at the top and in the middle which is quite tricky. So let's first of all add a fresh icon in here because you love using icons. So let's add another icon in this case. Let's add the movie icon. And we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to move it. And I'm really bad at moving it and Thrive. You need to grab that. So now we have an icon above the text. Not too bad, but not the sexiest thing I've ever seen. Let's change it to the purple color again, a little bit better. Let's add our background. So I'm going to speed through this because you've seen it before. Let's make it a dark color and then just bring it down to slightly lighter gray so it stands out. And then we're going to add some padding using our lock again and make it bigger. And then we're going to add the rounded corners to make it round. So then we have the round icon again. We could put a different color on it. I'm not sure I'm 100% happy with that, but let's not worry about it for the moment. What we want to do is put it on the top of the box, 50% sticking out, because that looks really cool. So we've got the icon highlighted. We're going to change the margin. We're going to undo the lock because I don't want the lock on. And it's not letting me turn the lock off. So let me try that again. And now we're going to move it 50%. So there I see that my choice of color was not very good. So I'm going to change my background color and actually make it the purple. 
and then I'm going to go change the icon color and make it white. That looks pretty good, right? So you can do that and you have then a nice content box. So there you go, three ways, or was that four ways, you can use icons in Thrive. You can add it to text, you can add it to buttons, and you can add it to boxes. These are some of the ways you can use icons to make your content look great, improve the look, feel, functionality, and conversion of your website, and help people know what they're looking at without needing to read everything. People really like that. So give it a try, see if you like it, and if you've got any questions, concerns, problems, tips, or ideas, feel free to put them in the comments. Uh, you can also check out Thrive Architect, the tool I've used here in a link below the video. And if you like this stuff and wanna get more web design tips, WordPress tips, or SEO tips, then feel free to subscribe. I'll be releasing a lot more videos and I'll see you guys in the next one.